hello everyone can yeah <laughs> so hi all i am krishna acharya and i'm a second year phd student at georgia tech and today i'll talk about our work on wealth dynamics over generations its analysis and interventions and this is joint work with ishwar ram arunachaleshwaran sampath kanan aaron roth and my advisor juba ziani Our goal in this work is to uh, quantify how wealth uh, disparities occur and propagate over generations. Why this is an important topic is because over uh, the decades the wealth disparity has been growing, and it's been progressively increasing, as you can see in this graph. And one explanation for this is that wealthier populations have access to better opportunities. like better universities and higher paying jobs and as a result they can accumulate more wealth and so the fundamental question we want to look at is how does the wealth of the future generations evolve and what kind of interventions can we make to reduce the wealth disparity so more precisely we want to study uh, how feedback loops arise in the context of university admissions so wealth impacts your admission to university and again university admission impacts a higher paying job and the future generations wealth so and this is what we are trying to model this self reinforcing wealth feedback loop um so with that in mind let me describe our model in words so you have individuals that have both a talent and wealth both of these are normally distributed these are gaussians and how well you do on the sat actually or the standardized test depends not only on your talent but also what wealth you have and i'll give some evidence for the dependence on wealth in the next slide and what the university gets <clears throat> the university has its own admission criteria and it only receives the sat score and it must decide whether to evaluate or uh, evaluate the sat score and admit or reject a candidate and this admission or rejection then determines the next generation's wealth um so let me just give a small evidence on why wealth is important so as you can see on the x axis you have <coughs> annual income and as you can see as the annual income is rising the sat score is also increasing i mean this is because higher income families can provide uh, their children with better education and test prep and so with that evidence laid uh, let's look at quantitatively quantitatively what our model looks like so you have talent which is identically distributed across populations but wealth actually depends on which population you are in specifically the mu i the mean for that gaussian is different and the sat score is a combination of your type and wealth it's captured by beta beta is in 0 1 and university has its own objective and an admission threshold tau so this objective is a different convex combination quantified by alpha and it gets the sat score evaluates the objective and decides to admit the candidate based on whether it's greater than the admission threshold tau and then the admission or rejection determines the next rounds wealth next generations wealth so how does it actually uh, let me quantify this last point in the next slide we make two modeling assumptions here for how the next generation's wealth evolves this is all within one population so the university doesn't know the type or wealth this is a natural assumption you only get to see a sat score and based on this you must form a posterior on the value of the objective and this conditional expectation of the objective it's if it's greater than the admission threshold tau that the university sets uh, it admits the candidate and this defines the admission rule and under this admission rule you can calculate what fraction of the population you are going to admit and the intuition here is that if you admit a greater fraction of the population uh, that population's wealth rises and it's captured by mu i of t plus 1 the mean wealth in the next round for the next generation 
And so under these two modeling assumptions and our, uh, like for the Gaussian type and well, our first contribution is that we can quantify exactly in closed form what the next generation's wealth is. Um, it's exactly like mu i of t plus one is some closed form for f times mu i of t. And so what's important here is that we show that this wealth update function f can have either one fixed point or three fixed point. It can't have any more or like two. So on the x-axis, what I've plotted is the current wealth. On the y-axis, you have the next round's wealth. And in blue, you have the wealth update function f of x. And in black is the y is equal to x. So what I mean by one fixed point or three fixed points is actually intersections with this y is equal to x line. And the red crosses show you where they intersect. So that's good, but what does one fixed point or three fixed point imply for wealth dynamics? Uh, what does it really mean to have one or three? So if you're in the regime where you have only one fixed point, uh, it doesn't matter what your starting wealth is. Um, for example, if you begin, I've marked in green the trajectories that you'll have. So if you begin like at 0 0.2, you can see you end up somewhere in 0 0.5 and then you can project that and you're going somewhere to 0 0.6. And similarly, if you begin high up there, you end up at the same fixed point. So this is to say there is no long-term disparities between populations of different starting wealth. Whereas if you have three fixed point, then it matters where your starting population's wealth is. So your lower wealth populations, if you follow the trajectory, you end up poor. And if you start up, up above Z to the second unstable fixed point, you end up at high wealth. So the takeaway here is that you really need interventions uh, to prevent long-term wealth disparity. And so what kind of interventions are we looking at here? So we look at two sets of interventions. The first one is, I'll quickly run through the first set. The first set is from the perspective of a university uh, or from the SAT score designer's perspective. And the second one is the perspective of a funding body or a government agency, which provides uh, some subsidy in each round if for each generation. And so what interventions can the university make? It can can maybe lower its admission threshold, it can change its weight on talent and, and, and so on. So let me quickly run through uh, what happens if the university decreases its admission threshold. So it's dropping its threshold from like 0 0.4 to 0 0.35 to 0.3. So you can see the wealth update function is shifting upwards. So what's happening is that you're ending up from a regime of three fixed points to a single high wealth fixed point. So, and that's good because you can admit more people. Uh, the wealth of the pop that population is of the whole population is increasing. And yeah. So similarly, if, if you increase, uh, if you care more as a university about talent, then uh, you can see that you go from a regime of three fixed points slowly to one low value flex point. And then as you increase alpha even more, you end up with a higher wealth fix point. Um, and you're decreasing disparity. Um, so the most interesting kind of subsidy here is like the direct subsidy, and which is like from the perspective of a funding body, which is providing some fixed subsidy in, to each generation over, over the generations. And the results that we have here hold even for, uh, they hold for any sigmoid which has three fixed points. It doesn't have to come from uh, the Gaussian assumptions on type and wealth. And what we show here is like, first of all, in practice to know what F is for each value of wealth, what the next round wealth is a difficult, it's a hard assumption. So let's look at a simple class of interventions, which is like same constant subsidy per, per generation. But to do this, you need to know some minimal information delta. And this delta is like uh, the maximum of x minus f of x in uh, the lower attractive region. So I've just made two plots of high delta and small delta. Um, this is just like the 
L infinity norm. And what does this delta capture? It captures how difficult it is for a constant subsidy to affect the next round's wealth. So when you have a big delta, it's for the same plus C subsidy, you, you increase slower when you have a smaller delta. You just, you just have a more linear function with a small delta. So, so you reach Z2 faster with uh, subsidies. And so now we have all the building blocks set up to define what the central designer's loss is. It's trying to minimize uh, the following. It's trying to minimize the total subsidy that it provides while uh, the distance to Z2 is also small. And rho just here is the discount factor. It's how much you value uh, current cost to future costs. And lambda is the relative weighting between uh, the discounted subsidy and the distance to Z2. So for example, you could, you could provide much higher subsidies, but then the green term gets, the green term is smaller, the blue term is higher. So there's a trade-off there and it's captured by Lambda. And for all our results, we need to define, uh, it's interesting to dis define this one short subsidy. So it's like you provide all the subsidy that you have in one time step and to take you to Z2 as fast as possible. You reach Z2 in one shot. So with that defined, uh, here are some optimal interventions that we uh, proved. So if, if your discount factor is greater than the relative weighting lambda, then one shot is optimal. So some intuition for this is like, if, if you care a lot about future costs that like, for example, rho is one, then, then single upfront costs are better, right? Why would you spend uh, inefficient smaller costs over more rounds? And similarly, if lambda is small, uh, recall one minus lambda is the distance to Z2. So lambda is small means you want to reach Z2 as soon as possible. So again, some intuition why one shot is optimal here. And a, another theorem is that if, if rho is less than lambda times one minus C over Z2 minus your starting wealth, then plus C constant subsidy has lower loss than one shot. And so I just would like to highlight here that if you have a small plus C subsidy, you actually recover this uh, row greater than Lambda. They, they're kind of complements. And we also show in the paper that uh, these are tight conditions. So, uh, and for more results, we would like to check out the paper. Yeah. Thanks.